I want to talk to you today a little a bit about God's ways being higher in a, than our ways. God's ways being higher than our ways. And the reason why I want to talk about this is because <clears throat> there's a, a lot of teaching going on and it's, and it's out there and it's, it's gaining strength uh, to the point that people's minds are being totally taken over about what Christ has done in our life. That through his stripes we are healed. And I believe that. And that God wants all good things for us. And I, 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 I believe that too. But the method of getting them is a problem. And it's, uh, what's being taught is that since God has already done this, it's for your taking now. You just take. Whenever you need to, you just take of it. And, um, and I need to do a little bit of teaching on this because I still believe this, that you need to pray to God and get it cleared with God first. You need to pray to God and petition the Lord with prayer and supplication and make your request, your request, not your demands, but your request made known unto him. And I, and I, yesterday I just had a little go around with the guy just slightly about uh, about this very same thing. I says it, it appears that the Spirit of God is, is growing and mounting stronger and stronger. And I see it um, in different places. But I see it with uh, a associate of mine that he, he's praying. And uh, he's, a couple of weeks ago he had a miracle happen. Uh, I said migraine headache where this kid was brought from the hospital. They couldn't do anything. And I said he prayed on him t uh, and instantly the headache was gone. And I said, he knew it. He just felt like that God wanted to do that. And, and when he prayed, it happened. And he, he rebuked me. And he says, no. He says, it's, it's here for the taking now. You don't have to. It's not something you've got to cry out to God for. But it's something that's already here. And I just totally disagree. And I'm going to give you some reasoning for this. Because this teaching has really gone around. With, with a lot of preachers on TV, and they do have big congregations. And I understand that. You get, you get a lot of people, you get a lot of people uh, uh, believe in this, and they want to believe it because it, they take the place of God. It's, it's natural that you wouldn't have to talk to the banker about taking his money, that you could just go up and say, I'll take a thousand. I'll take ten thousand. In fact, why stop there? I'll just take all the money you got. I just take all the money in the bank. Well, no, you got to talk to the banker and you got to tell him your plan and you got to reason with him. And then he decides whether he's going to do this or not. Isn't that right? Well, that's kind of like the way with God. You know, you go to God and you, you lay out the matter and you say, Lord, what are we going to do? This is what I'd like to do, but the, I know that I got to clear it with you. Otherwise, you're not going to send the spirit of God. You're not going to send angels. You're not going to do anything unless you want to do it. And so you reason with God, and you cry out for the what of God, the mercy of God, and the kindness of the Lord, because his ways are higher than our ways, right? So we go to Joel 2.28, Now I, I want to just be able to, uh, because people will pull certain scriptures out of the Bible, pray whatsoever and believe in your heart and it'll come to pass. Well, yeah, but we got to rightly divide the truth, right? We got to really understand that. Is that what Jesus really meant? Pray whatever you want to pray and just see. Well, let's go to Joel 2.28. And it says, you know, come to pass in the last day, says the Lord, and I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men will see visions, and old men will dream dreams. And on your, my servants and on my handmaidens, I'll pour out my spirit in those days. And they shall prophesy. He said all flesh. All flesh. Is Joe Biden prophesying? Is our president prophesying by the Spirit of God? Are the people in the penitentiary, all of them prophesying? How about in the county jails? Every one of them get, that get arrested, are they prophesying too? Is the Spirit of God poured out upon them? No, it's not poured out upon them. What was God saying? That he was going to pour out the Spirit of God on his people. But he said all flesh. Well, you've got to rightly divide the truth of God. He's not pouring out his spirit on Satan's followers. He's not doing that. 
Jesus says, I, I pray for these, Father, that you give me, but I don't pray for the world, the people in the world, but I pray for those that you, you give me that they, they would never fail in their faith with you. Isn't that amazing? Why didn't Jesus pray for everybody in the world that the whole world gets saved? Because God don't want to save the whole world. He's got to select people he wants to save, and he's got to select people that he, he wants to pour out his spirit upon, you see? In 2 Timothy 2.15, Paul says, Study to show yourself to pr approve, rightly dividing the truth of God. Rightly dividing it. So you understand. So when Jesus says, If you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. I mean, did he really mean that? Did he really mean that, he, that you, your head would come out of his mouth? Is that what he really meant? He mean that you were down in there going, Oh, here we go. No, it was metaphoric. You got to rightly divide the truth. You got to rightly understand what he's trying to say. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. God says, My, God's ways are higher than your ways. God's ways are higher than your ways. His thoughts are higher than your thoughts. If you read that in the context it is, it's like you can't, you don't have the mind of God. Although the scripture says that you have the mind of Christ. We'll read, we'll read that. They're higher than your ways. So, so if God's ways are higher than your ways, how can you decide what you need without clearing it with him? How can, you, how can you decide what's best for you and the plan that God has in your life if you're going to if you're going to claim everything in your life and just take it? How are you going to know if your ways aren't as high as God ways? If you're not as smart as God? So what was really meant when it said but you got the mind of Christ? How do we look at that if you got the mind of Christ, Jesus knew everything. Well, he didn't know, though, when he was coming back, he says only the Father knows that. Even Christ didn't have the mind of the Father and knew everything. There was one thing he didn't know, and I just mentioned it. Well, how much, how much more with you and I that we don't, we don't have the mind of God? We don't understand all things. We don't understand the plan of God. I believe there's a perfect time for everything. I believe that. Do you know the perfect time? And we could say, I don't know. I would just have it all right now. We, we really want good right now. But is that what God wants? So we pray and we don't get what we want. Why? Why? Because it's not in the plan of God right now. God says, no. Next week at this time, or next year at this time, or 10 years from now, I'll heal you of that. I'll change things around. It's in my plan for you. But it's not for you right now. So then you listen to a preacher that's trying to tell you, no, God wants it for you right now. He wants you in that Cadillac right now. He wants you, he wants you totally healed right now. And God says, no, I got, a, I got a big lesson to teach you out of this whole thing. It's how you got there. And why you're there where you're at and how you need to get out. See? Or God says, I just, I might teach you something that doesn't have anything to do with your, your illness or your situation, but I'm going to teach you something out of that. And God said, I planned it for you. Rightly understanding God. That's why we see God, and we see in 1 Corinthians 1.26, God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Why? Why? Because God wants the glory. Because God wants the glory. You don't get the glory. But people are trying to take the glory because I just claimed it. I just prayed it and it happened. And, and, and with an attitude like that, God isn't getting glory, you're getting it. Because God already gave it. Now we'll see if, if you got what it takes to take what he has. That's what they teach. 
Well, if you got what it takes to take what, they, what he has, then you're getting the glory. And God don't want to give you the glory. He wants the glory of delivering you. He wants the glory of delivering you. It's a reckless teaching. And I just want you to understand in this, in this I'm just not getting down on the, the teaching. I want us to understand and you to understand why you don't get everything you want when you want it. Or some things you never get from God. Because God's ways are higher than your ways. Why does God want to confound the wise? Well, for one reason, why God don't get the wise, because it wise, wise people are always puffed up in themselves. Solomon said that knowledge puffs up. God also said in the last days, knowledge would be increasing in a big way. also says in 2 Timothy 1.4 that people would be traitors, heady, high-minded, high-minded, arrogant, arrogant people. Why are they so arrogant? Because they're smart. And, and God says, I don't want to deal with that. I'll go to the person that's not got it all together, the family that doesn't have it all together, and I'm going to co totally change things in their life. And the wise will see it and wonder, wow, that's amazing. Why would God work like that? God says, my ways are not your ways. I don't like pride. Philippians 4.16, as I said, it said, make a request known unto God. It's a request. But he says that these people that are arrogant, he said they're ever learning, they're ever trying to learn, and they're never able to come to the understanding of God, to the knowledge of the truth. And I would, I would pray today that we would understand what truth is. In 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 6, I, wa I, wanna, I wanna read that. Because that really does help us when we talk about understanding God I want you to see this why you need to clear things with God why you need to be close to God and and clear things with the Lord because he says it is written eye has not seen nor ear heard neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for us or prepared for them that love him it hasn't even entered into the mind it hasn't even been talked about. You ever notice when you pray for somebody how limited we are? At best, you'd find four things that they need. What do you think God would say? There is a thousand things they need because he has the broader understanding. That's what God would say. But we're limited to maybe three or four. If you say, I'll pray for you, LaDonna. I would like, well, I, I know a couple things probably. Maybe three. At the best, four. If I know how her car is running, maybe there's something there. But that'd be the best. I mean, really. So with me, with my little mind, I'm limited to four little things. You think God is limited to four little things? He says that our mind has that we haven't even heard about the things of God. What God is doing in the plan of God. What qualifies us to be so arrogant as to say, I understand what I need and I claim it. Oh my golly. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Okay, that's good. How many things? All things? It does say all things, doesn't it? But then Paul talks about seeing through a glass dimly. 
a dark glass. You can't see on the other side. You, you're only prophesying in part. God isn't telling you everything. And you can't see like, you, like God sees. We're going to read that. Isn't that amazing? But we see or the Spirit of God tells us everything. No, he doesn't. You know why? You have to rightly divide that. Because God gives you a, a word of wisdom. Just a word. Just a little sentence. Your next step. That's what he gives you. Why don't he just tell you everything? Well, that's what it says here. Well, you've got to rightly divide the truth. You've got to rightly divide what's going on, God. Whatsoever I pray I can have. Whatsoever I claim I can have. That's not what he's saying at all. Even though it's said that way, you've got you to look at it and say, well, wait a minute, there's something I don't understand. There's something I don't understand here. It's obvious. Because with my little mind, you know, how can I know? I don't know in other people's lives, and I really don't know in my own life. Think about it. Write down things that you really, you really need. Could you do 10? Would there be 10 things in your life that you would say, okay, first of all, I need to operate in God in a mighty way. That's number one. I want to do signs and wonders. And God says, oh, oh, you do? Yeah, I think I could do that. Yeah, I could see myself on stage with that white suit on. Or whatever suit you'd have on. I could see myself in that dress. Yeah, I'm on the stage. You'd be healed. Yeah, and God says, oh, is that true? Well, that isn't what I got for you. You hear. We talk about what God has, body, different body parts. One's a hearer, one's a talker. You know, and we think, well, gee, I don't even know the plan of God. You know, you finally realize when you read the book, I don't know the plan of God for me. So I guess I better see God and find out what little part I have to play. But if we were giving it down, we'd say, okay, do mighty signs and wonders. And oh, by the way, we sure could use some money. Money really does answer all problems. Even Solomon said that. It solves them all. So we'll, we'll take that. And then once we got past that, we go, okay, make my kids obedient. Make my hus husband to love me or my wife to love me. See, is there anything else? Oh, we'll take a new house. Well, money buys that. Let's see. Let's see. What else do I need? See, I'm doing everything in God. and uh, Signs and wonders. You're about the four things. And if you, when you went to God, you go, God, is there just four things? God says, you really haven't got a clue. You're not qualified to run you. Leave that up to me. Right? You're not qualified to run you. Oh, Lord, if I just had that new cell phone. Yeah, I think that would really do it. I could, I could text and email and everything. And I could even find out what's going on in the nightly news all at the same time. Yeah, that's a cell phone. Yeah, that's where it's at. And God says, we don't use cell phones around here. Oh, we don't? No. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them. Why? Because they are spiritually discerned. They're foolishness to the world. So God's ways are going to be foolish to you because his ways are higher than your ways. Well, God, why haven't you got me out of this predicament? But my ways are higher than your ways. Well, I don't understand this. Yes, I know. You'll never understand a lot of things about God. You know why? Because you're not smart enough. It's that simple. Compared to God, we are what? Ignorant? Stupid? We don't know. What? Huh? You're going to do what? Well, that wasn't in my plans. God says, I know. Right? I mean, really, compared to God, how brilliant are we? We're just above an ant. 
You ever see them on the ground going here and there and there and here? And that's kind of how we are. Well, don't tell me I'm dumb. Don't tell me I'm dumb. Listen, everybody's dumb compared to God. They really are. If our Congress understood what they were doing and God really put it in their mind, they would never pass another bill that's bad. If our state would have understood what they're doing on Valentine's Day, allowing homosexuals to marry, they would have never done it. But God really enlightened them. How it's an abomination to them and that he's God Almighty. And he frowns on that. They go, no, 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 no. We're not doing that ever. Not on Valentine's Day. Not nothing. But they don't understand. Their minds are darkened. They don't understand. They don't understand what it does to society and a home and a family where people really draw strength off of. You go, you go to a family that's dysfunctional, the children, it'll be on them for the rest of their life. Yes, they might get all that straightened out, but they will have, they'll, they'll have a problem because their family was dysfunctional. And they'll have to make sure their family's not dysfunctional or their children will hurt from that. Families, children draw off a functional family. People draw off a functional society. Amen? It's not functional when men are kissing on men. It's not functional. It don't work. It don't work. It don't work even with God. And that's why God says it don't work. Okay. But he... That we're back here in 1 Corinthians 2.15. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet himself is no man judging. For who knows the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. But it does not say that we know everything in Christ. Like I said, in 1 Corinthians 12.8, it says God gives us a word of wisdom. He just shows us a part, a little bit, a little space. And that's if you're really strong in the Lord and God is using you spiritually. He still just gives you a little bit. All the years I've been a pastor, I was, I was amazed. I was amazed when he had called me in to be a pastor. I just never saw myself as that. I just, I just did not see myself talking to people and trying to sway people into the word of God. I didn't see it. I, would just, I was just in the church cleaning the bathrooms and making sure it was all ready and the lights were on and the bills were paid and the preacher would come in and preach. I thought that was my job and I was fine with that. I didn't have a problem with that. But little did I know that God knew from the beginning of time what he wanted me to do. He never told me that. He wasn't telling me every day. So that would be one thing that I would never pray for. That would that'd be one thing that I'd never claim from God, that I would be a minister of the Lord. I would have never done it. So if it was up to me, I would never have been what God wanted me to be because my mind doesn't go that far. So I would have been limiting myself because I was playing God and I knew. Well, I, I didn't know. And I remember when the Lord opened up the doors and he says, two weeks from now you'll be pastoring this church. And I go... How can that happen? The people in that church don't even like me. Thirteen nine. He's talking about charity never fails. Goodness never fails. The love of God never fails. But we know in part and we prophesy in part. I thought we had the mind of Christ and we knew all things. No, 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 no. You know in part. You know a little bit. But that, but that little bit that you know... That comes from the mind of God. So you do, in those cases, you do have the mind of Christ in matters. But it don't go very far. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Who's the perfect? When Jesus Christ comes on the scene and you're caught up together with him, then you're going to understand as he understands. When that that is perfect comes, that's not the church. The church is not the perfect one, and that's being taught out there because it says tongues will be done away with because they don't like the gifts of the Spirit. So they say that's when the church, the Bible comes. That's which it's perfect. Well, let me tell you about the church. We got homosexuals preaching. Is the church perfect? No, it's not perfect. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part that your understanding will be done away with. You're going to know. 
When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, and when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know even as I am known. So the day's coming when you're going to be totally understanding God and understanding the will of God. But you just know in part and you only see a little bit. So the reason why I say all this is that we don't understand some things, a lot of things, most things with God. And that's why we got to go to God and keep close to him and keep tapped into him. Amen. Then you're going to understand how to pray. You're going to understand for a little bit. I need to pray for this now. Whatever that is, because God says now's the time to pray for it. So Jesus is where you come into the, all this. Jesus is the way. If you have not confessed, you have not turned your life over to Jesus Christ, you need to do it. You just need to do it right now. You need to get on your knees and ask God Almighty for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. And give your heart to God so God can use you and that you can start praying right and prayers will be answered. Amen. Stay tuned. Pastor Legner will be right back with the conclusion of today's message. Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad you tuned in. When you pray this week, just, just ask God to show you what to pray because sometimes we don't know what we should pray as we ought. But the Spirit of God is going to help us. And this is where we're at. Let God show you. Let God show you. Instead of you just claiming this and claiming that, it, you need to go to God and say, God, what's going on? Let his mind be in you in that matter. Amen? He'll show you about that much of your life. And just take that much and let it be enough. Amen? God bless you. Have a good week. Amen.